G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and for today's video I'm going to show you a quick and easy application of ChatGPT that will cost you nothing and with very low effort, it will save you time in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So data segmentation and SQL query building in Marketing Cloud is often a task that is reserved for your SQL developers in Marketing Cloud, and it's a time-consuming task. Well, for today I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT and the SMC Companion Chrome extension together to create SQL activities that can query your own custom data sets. So for today's example, we're going to use the AmScript 03 Challenge data extensions. I have my five data extensions built here. You can check them out for yourself on my GitHub repository for the AMP 03 Challenge. I'll put a link to this in the description below as well. Once you download those five data extensions, you can create the data extension using the images here in this link. You can create them with the correct data syntax as well. Once done, you can then download the SMC Chrome extension. I will show you that link in the description below as well. Once downloaded, you can refresh your token and then update your data extension as I've done already. I'll put links to videos on how to do this in the link descriptions below. Once done, we can then search for those data extensions. So for today, I'm gonna to search for my AmScript 03 data extensions. So I'll copy that folder name, go to my Chrome extension and click on the search button. I can then search for those data extensions just like that. Now with this done, I can click on each of these five data extensions and click on the sqldatadiagram.io link here and copy this to the dbdiagram.io. You can click on the link there to go to the website. I've got it already up ready to go. So you can click on that link and create a new diagram. I will paste in my table schemas for each of these data extensions. So I can go back in, get my cloud learners, click on the link and copy the code. I'll go backwards and forwards now, copying and pasting in each of these database data types. So I've got my next one here, my beam tags, which I'll copy and paste just like that. Next one is the beam roles. Once again, copy and pasting the table information into the database diagram schema builder. Final one being the beams, and there it is there. Copy and paste. Now with the table diagram complete and the five tables brought in, I can now arrange my data. Of course, learners, beams, and beam learners with the tags and the roles. Now to create the relationship between these, of course, a cloud learner is unique. So we'll connect the cloud learner to the cloud learner ID, just like that. The beams connects to the beam ID, just like that. And of course, beam ID through like that as well. And so now we have our database design. With this done, we can now copy that database design on the left-hand side here. So all my 35 lines of text, I'm going to control A, control C, and copy all that text. Now next, I'm going to jump in to ChatGPT. Again, I'll put a link to this in the description below, but I am using a logged in free version. So I've got my brand new chat ready to go here. I can send my first message. Now my first message is going to be, uh, here is a database schema. Remember it. Just like that. And then pasting my copied text and pressing enter. And so ChatGPT is going to have a look at that information and say, Thank you, I've now got that database information. So I'm going to stop that uh, summary it's going to give me. I can start asking it some questions. So I have a few pre-hand questions that I've thought of earlier, and so we'll start processing through some of these questions. The first one I've got here is to create a SQL Server 2016 query. That's very important because Michael Had does use an SQL syntax based on this Server 2016 implementation. So create an SQL Server 2016 query that returns all learners. How many points they have earned from their completed beams and how many beams have they completed? Order the results from highest to lowest count of beams completed. Now importantly here, we're talking about beams and learners. These are not common things like invoices and SKUs. These are all words and terms that are totally related to my custom data set here in this schema. Again, uh, ChatGPT does not know about this in the past. It's never heard of cloud learners or beams before, but I gave it my table structure and it's now gone and built out an SQL query data set and responded to my business question. How can I produce an SQL query that will do these things? So let's press enter and see what it comes back with. And it says, cool, based on your schema, let's have a look at what we can do. And so it's gonna finish off my query and there it is. Now we can listen to its summary or we can take a look for the code ourselves. I was going to say, select the name, the beams completed, and the total points earned. Those are the three things we asked for. And it's going to get it from our cloud learners, which is called CL1. Good job. 
and it's going to, of course, bring in our Cloud Learner Beams, the related structure here, which contains the completed information based on beams they've completed. Good job, ChatGPT. It's only going to bring in ones where the completed date is not null, so they have completed it. Again, well done to ChatGPT there. It's going to group by the ID and name, which of course you must do. And otherwise, it looks pretty good. So we can try that for ourselves. We're going to need to build a data extension first and put this data in. So let me do a quick time warp here. And I'll go through and build this data extension up, and then we'll paste the query into Automation Studio. With our data extension built, let's now create a brand new automation to put our tests in. We'll call this one our chat GPT tests. We go done, use a schedule, and of course, let's now create our SQL activity. So we'll drag it in, and let's go and create ourselves a brand new query activity. We'll call this GPT-1 for our first test. And let's now copy and paste in the query it gave us. So we'll copy the code and paste it straight in, and we'll see what it thinks. Now, I can already see one potential problem. We do have an order by, and there's no top function. But since we are bringing back our cloud learners, we can check out for ourselves. Now, cloud learners doesn't only have five records in it, so we can straight away do a quick top five function to solve this first error. So one small slip there from ChatGPT, but that's not too bad. We do know that, of course, from our error, we do have to have a top offset or four function. We can say top five, but we could even say top 100%, just to cheat the system there. So we can try it out, and now our syntax works. Good -o. So let's go next, and we'll choose to overwrite this into our newly created data extension in our exercises and our chat GPT test one. And we'll go next and finish. All right, let's go save, and we'll see how this SQL query fares. So the SQL query has just finished in 13 seconds, completed successfully. So let's jump back into our folder here, refresh our AMP script 03 folder, and there is five records. Let's check out those records and see if all five of our learners have come back with beams completed and points earned. And there's our data. It looks like it's come back with those exact values. So the best part is that I actually have this exact question as one of the tasks in exercise 3A, my AMP script lookup and loops. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. And the second task of this uh, exercise here, if I scroll down the second task, was to bring back the counter beams and sum of points. So the exact same question we just asked in SQL was a part of the exercise here in AMP script. I can see straight away that Alpha and Bravo both had 10 beams completed been 33400 and 33200 as the total points. Jump back into Marketing Cloud and I can have a look for myself, 10 and 10, 33400 and 33200. So the SQL query made by ChatGPT has pulled back the correct data, just like that. Okay, so first test went really well. So let's try out a second one. I've got a second question I've thought of and let's see how it goes with this one. So create an SQL Server 2016 query that shows the top five most popular beam tags based on how many beams have been completed by learners, returning the tag name, how many beams have that tag, and how many times beams with that tag have been completed. So the question here is, using our database schema here, we want to know what the most popular tags are. So uh, we've got learners who are completing their beams in their Cloud Learner Beams table here. We want to know what are the most common tags, most common themes of the beams that they are learning. So you can maybe go and tell our content team to make more of those beam types because they are being really well picked up by our learners. So let's have a look and see how ChatGPT does for this one. So based on our schema, here is the following thing. Now we did ask for the tag name, how many beams have that tag, and how many have been completed in total. And straight away we've got some query being written out. There's our three fields coming back, so that's great. And here is our results. So we can try that for ourselves. Again, we we'll do a quick time warp now and go and build out that data extension and we'll see what the results look like. We paste it into an SQL query activity. Okay, so we're ready now to insert the SQL for our second test. So we'll jump into ChatGPT and we'll copy our code and we'll dump it into an SQL query. Now again, a few small things that did get a little bit wrong, but we can fix those up on the fly. First of all, of course, no semicolons, but we'll see how this goes. I'm not going to like this offset order, but we'll give it a try and see what it comes back with because we are picking up the right data. We're getting our beam tags correctly and we are then looking those up on the beams using beam ID correctly. So well done. It actually skipped the uh, beams table and went straight from beam ID all the way over here. So again, well done to ChatGPT. 
It also is going to pick up the completed date is not null once again. So it's going to pick up the correctly only completed beams condition there. Grouping by tag, so we should have only one tag per uh, one row per tag, which is great. And we're only going to pick up the top five rows offset zero. So interesting way of uh, solving the top five problem there. So with that done, syntax looks complete. So we'll go next. And we'll go overwrite and overwrite into that data extension once more. Here is our chat GPT two test. Next and finish. So with that done, let's save our automation and run our chat GP2 test number two. And the automation has completed successfully. I can see here that chat GPT2 completed in just a few seconds. Go back into our data extension, refresh our folder and hopefully find indeed five rows. So good start there. Let's see if we get the correct five rows. Go into our records and have a quick look. So according to this, the beams with tag, there are apparently five beams that have the tag of data and five of leadership, but based on completed, the most completed is general. So there are nine beams that were completed, the tag of general, seven with design. So I've gone and had a quick spot check of the data to see how ChatGPT has done. And let me show you what I've found. If I go into my beam tags data extension and scroll down to my general order by tag, of course, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of my beam IDs that contain the general tag. Not four, like it suggested, there's in fact seven. And the reason for that is because the connection it made was from the beam tags to the cloud learner beams where complete is not null. It's only counted the ones where there is a completed beam, not all beams altogether. Now an easy mistake to make because of the way we worded the question to chat GPT. But having said that, we'll move on. There are apparently four of these beams that have been completed a total of nine times. So we can see, uh, see for ourselves, the first one here is 39 and 39 we can see is going to be completed twice. So we have a count of two. Uh, number 27 has been completed one, two times. So a count of four. Number 12 has been completed one time. So a count of five. Uh, number 16 has been completed one, two, three, four times. So a count of nine. Number 34 has been completed zero times. Started once, completed zero, so still on nine. Number 26 has not even been started, so nothing there at all. And then number 38. Scrolling down, and again, 38 has never been started at all. So a count of nine across those four beams. So the correct score technically because it was only counting beams that have been completed, but we could have changed our wording to get the total number of beams, not just those that were completed. So I've had one excellent result and one pretty okay result. Let's do one more and see how we go. Pasted my third and final question for this chat GPT run through and we'll see how we do. So create an SQL server 2016 query, returning the cloud learner's name and ID and three columns to show the latest three beam IDs that each learner has started. This one's tricky as we are asking for three additional columns to be created to show the three IDs of the latest three beams they've started. So if you have a look at our database diagram, you can see we're looking for the latest three beam IDs based on start date for each learner. Again, a bit of a tricky SQL question to ask. It doesn't take me a few minutes to make, so let's see how ChatGPT does in just a few seconds. Well, here's a query that could return these based on our schema. Interesting, so it's going to try and use a row number of a partition by inline. There's one small quirk when it comes to doing SQL within Marketing Cloud, and we can't use the inline row number of a partition because it's a view that's being created inside Marketing Cloud. So unfortunately, this response is not going to be okay for now. We could, of course, go and try it out for ourselves, but I'm pretty sure this one won't come back successfully. So instead what we could do is we could regenerate our response and get a different query back returned. So we'll try that out and we'll say, please give us a second response and see how we go this time. We're gonna return back latest beam, latest beam ID. There we are. Third latest, second latest and latest. Very nicely done. It's gonna try to do a whole lot of different tables. Interesting. Okay, so it's gonna do this selecting with row partition number where row number one, two and three Really curious response this time. Definitely a different way of doing things. Three different uh, left joins being brought in against our cloud learners. 
curious. So let me jump ahead now and go and create a data extension that will suit this data structure. And then let's try and insert this into Automation Studio and see how it runs. Okay, so we have our SQL ready for test number three. So let's jump back into ChatGPT, copy our code, and place it into our SQL query activity. And we'll try it out. Love it syntax and looking good on a copy and paste basis. So let's go next. And we'll try and insert this now into our data extension. Going through and choosing our chat GPT test number three. There it is. Next. Overwrite and finish. So let's now try it out by saving the automation and running once our chat GPT number three test. So the SQL has just finished successfully, so we can jump again into our data extension and check out our records. And hopefully we find for each learner, we do, they have their latest beam, second latest beam, and third latest beam ID. Good one. So for Alpha, their latest was three, then 15, then 30. Okay, Alpha, let's try it out. We'll copy your ID. Three, 15, 30. Three, 15, 30. Let's go into the color of the beams and let's check it out for Alpha. Three, 15 and 30, control F. And if we search by start date, by newest first, there we are. And apparently the alpha one here, there it is. Three, 15 and 30, perfect. So the SQL has come through perfectly. Looks like we have the exact data that we needed for our business question in the SQL. So as you can see, you can use chat GPT in line with the database diagram.io uh, SQL structure that it outputs to create your own schema to paste into ChatGPT, then ask it very business worded questions. Again, the questions we asked today were all around how many learners, how many beams, how many points, these things that are not common language. We didn't ask for invoices or SKUs or total billables. We asked for very business centric terms. And it was able to give us back some pretty good SQL that didn't require too much manual editing. Now, one big consideration of this scenario today is that to make this work, you do have to upload schemas of your customer and business data into ChatGPT. Now, for some customers, this will be okay because your data will be benign enough and not business specific enough to warrant any kind of data or privacy concerns. Because if you do work in an industry or a sector that does have some privacy or you do use some fields in your database that may give away too much information, then of course, be careful using tools like ChatGPT as you shouldn't be publishing your business data in online services like this. However, again, for today, some of these fields and these database designs we've used are very, very basic. They weren't gonna give away any business intellectual property, and we were able to get some great results from SQL when we asked ChatGPT some very business-worded questions. So with all that in mind, I encourage you to download the SMC companion and give this a go for yourself with your own data, as long as it's not too sensitive, and try asking some questions to get some really great SQL responses. I hope you enjoyed today's walkthrough of ChatGPT and SMC Companion. If you have, then please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to the channel so that you're notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.